Good morning, everyone. My name is Christopher Shackleton here with the Ontario Museum Association, and welcome to our webinar, Podcasting for Ontario Museums, part of our Small Bites webinar series. Uh, I am a late 20s male uh, with brown hair, and I'm wearing a uh, blue shirt today, and I'm joining you from our OMA offices here in Toronto, and I'm surrounded by our OMA blue background. As an organization of provincial scope, the Ontario Museum Association recognizes that its members and community live and work on the lands and territories of Indigenous peoples. We are thankful to the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people who have cared for these territories since time immemorial and who continue to contribute to all communities across the province. We acknowledge that there are more than 40 treaties and other land agreements that cover Ontario, and that the descendants and cultures of the First Peoples who lived here are a vibrant and integral part of our society today. We gratefully acknowledge and deeply value the opportunity we have to learn from and cherish the contributions of Indigenous peoples of the past, present, and into the future. As we acknowledge the colonial legacy of museums, we dedicate ourselves to move forward in partnership with Indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. As you participate in this gathering, we invite you to reflect on the land that you are on, who the traditional keepers of the land are, what the treaty relationship is, or if it is unceded territory. Toronto, where the Ome offices are located, is the territories of Mississaugas of the Credit, the Haudenosaunee, and the Huron-Wendat. This territory is part of the Dishwith One Spoon Wampum Agreement and is also covered by the Upper Canada Treaties. I want to make sure that everyone joining us today knows how to participate. Uh, you should be able to see the slides and you'll be able to see and hear the panelists speak. If you'd like to send a question to the panelists, simply type your message into the Q&A box you can access at the bottom of your screen. If you'd like to say hello to your colleagues on the call, you can chat with them using the chat feature, which you can also access at the bottom of your screen. At the bottom of your screen, you can also access the automated closed captions by clicking the CC icon. Our OMA staff will be monitoring the chat and can help you out with any of the technical questions that you might have. So thank you so much for joining us this morning. Our podcasting webinar was one of the uh, most requested in the previous evaluations for our Small Bites webinar series. So we're so glad to get to bring this to you this morning. Uh, up first is uh, Maxime Excario Blanco. And so while he gets ready with his slides, I'm going to read his introduction. Uh, so Maxime Escario Blanco is a French self-taught content creator that has been a freelancer videographer, uh, working with businesses and organizations for several years, helping them to really build on their story. Uh, through his journey, he's tailored his crafts and become interested in other kinds of content like podcasts. Uh, Maxime is also knowledgeable of new opportunities for organizations. So I'm gonna stop my slide share here, uh, Maxime, and I'll let you take it away. Thank you very much uh, here. I just have to find it. Just give me one minute here and boom, good. Just have to go back here. And normally we should be good. Looks great. Hey, okay. just put yourself over there. So hi everyone, and thank you very much for the introduction. So yes, today we're gonna to talk about podcasts. Uh, I'm gonna to try to be uh, quick and easy. Uh, there is a lot of information that maybe you know, maybe you don't. Uh, so let's get that started and done. So first of all, I want to just introduce yourself this uh, nice saying from Mark Maron. Uh, he's saying that the uh, medium of podcasting and the personal nature of it there is a relationship you build with your listeners and relationship they have with you. They could be just sitting there, chunking on listening. There is nothing like that. It's so podcast is, is should be simple and easy to consume. Uh, here, boom. Oh, yeah, this here. So uh, first of all, I want to uh, show you where is podcast coming from? So basically in uh, early uh, 2000s, uh, you have uh, Adam Curry and Dave Wiener. Uh, what they did, they had uh, their iPods and they wanted to put uh, radios uh, recording that were broadcasting and they were wanting to put it uh, into their iPods. And this is how they created the word podcast from iPod and broadcasted uh, um interviews that, that were on the radio so that, that's like a funny thing that we create our business and ideas from experience so that's the quick story behind it um uh, so what is a podcast so that's so we are diving into it now um so a podcast could be audio but it could be video and it could be both uh, and and that's that's a good opportunity. I, I'm going to repeat myself on that, but this is going to be a great opportunity for you. Like a podcast 
was video uh, was audio but nowadays you have to think that a podcast should also be video and there's different ways and techniques that you can use one podcast episode to create multiple uh, podcast episodes or maybe short form content for social and such so an audio podcast is just a series of audio episodes that focus on specific topics and all seen and a video podcast is simply the same but with video who can create a con uh, a podcast is anyone we have a few tips for you uh as like it could be anyone but you have to have some requirements like concepts and stuff uh how much does it cost that was one of the questions that we've been asked uh it really depends i'm going to show you uh our offer as a video production company and how much we charge uh but it, it really depends um if you go just audio if you go audio and video um and it depends how much editing uh, you need to do on it so it really depends uh on average you'll see that it's like a couple of hundred dollars but it could be more depending on how big you want to go and what's your vision uh and so, yeah, so I just talked. So uh, what we wanted to do with that slide is to um, show you kind of a breakdown where like to understand how the price is being fixed. So it's the recording and the filming. You have the editing and you you can also have the publishing taken care of by a video production, video production company just like us. Uh, or you can just publish it by yourself if you want to save some money or if you have a member in your team. So that's kind of like a breakdown uh, for us. Uh, if you come for an hour in the studio, uh, well, you come, it's 120, and then it's 50 bucks, like round it up, 50 bucks per episode if you want us to edit it. Um, and then if you want us to publish it, then it's 50 bucks. And jingles, we don't do it. We are going to outsource it. So we charge 50 bucks because that's an average price that we find with freelancers that are doing jingles. Uh, this is uh, just for audio. Uh, we also have uh, the video part, and I guess, like, if I remember correctly, it's like fifty bucks an hour on top uh, for the recording, and maybe a couple more, like, to to for the editing because it's extra work. It's different softwares and such. But just to give you like a breakdown, and don't worry about uh, like the slides are going to be available, so you don't need to take screenshots or notes. Uh, I'm going to share that with you. Um, later uh, via email uh we are to listen a, a podcast or watch a podcast where well, you probably know that you have different platforms like apple audible spotify you also have youtube podcast and uh, essentially you, we are listening or watching podcasts on our smartphone nowadays everything is smartphone uh, so that's why it's also interesting to dive into video because uh, now you're able to go also on different socials. You're also able to have a podcast teaser on Instagram, uh, TikToks maybe if your audience is over there. We're going to talk about the audience just after. Uh, but yeah, so you have those um, those platforms that that exist. Uh, I'm, we didn't put it here, but uh, maybe it's it's after. But we had a question of like, what is the best? platform to publish my podcast um my answer is there is no like there, there is like big names like apples and spotify and youtube of course but it's like the important thing is not necessarily the platform is how consistent and how uh, how much value you put in your podcast this is the the number two tips that you have to have in mind is not the platform. It's about you and how you create your concepts and how you deliver the concept. That's what's important. And um, the opportunity that you have to see is that the listener, the listenership is continuing to grow by 9%. Those are just numbers, but you know that uh, uh, digital content is growing. So that's an opportunity. The opportunity here is just, you just have to take it. Um, now, deep diving into the concept and how to deliver uh, the podcast. You have private podcast and you have public podcast. We know just public post podcast uh, because this is what's been like uh, marketing more and more. Uh, but you can also think about private podcast uh, for your employees or for like a specific audience. Uh, you can. Uh, deliver private podcasts with private links that I have access to. It's also an opportunity to sell podcasts, video or audio. Um, 
you can also sell podcasts that way we're using private links so there's also an opportunity here uh, maybe for you to jump on and make some money with your podcast uh why podcast so we are now going into like the story and the value that we're going to deliver uh a podcast audio or, or video is very very helpful in the sense that you're going to be able to tell stories that are important for you and the point number two is very interesting it's mobile friendly so people just like you are consuming your stories and they're generally um, interesting into your stories and they are like driving doing the thing it's mobile it's uh, you can consume it wherever you want it's also very cost effective it's very flexible in the sense that if you if you don't have like a big budget you can go just audio and it's going to work and if you have some more budget you can go video so you really can adapt to what uh, what uh, what your budget is um it also shows a brand personality this is also really like from the the saying the first uh the first saying that i uh read it has to be simple it has to reflect your personality it has to be totally transparent this is what the the, the audience is is wanting to have is transparency so it's showing your brand's personality it's enhancing your uh visibility it's because you are putting yourself upfront every week or every month and you have your personality and your transparency so it's very good for your visibility and it creates therefore this relationship with your customers uh, that are coming uh now what to make a good podcast this is very important is first you have to follow all those steps you have to have a unique idea and concept if you don't have a, a concept if you don't prep your podcast this is not going to go nowhere so you have to plan your podcast you have to plan your episodes and this is what we do here for example we think that if you want to sell something you first have to have a good strategy and then you have to create uh the um, the visuals to then sell the strategy but you need to have this sort of strategy and point number two is very interesting also uh, as like your museums uh you have to Play with your audience saying that uh, I know that you are probably going to deep dive into a really specific and really interesting um, subject, but maybe there is an opportunity every once in a while to do like a generic episode that is more accessible to a broader audience. So your audience is like not like this, like too tiny, but like, you know, you get it. Uh, then you also have the opportunity uh, to interact with the audience and to create this interaction uh, through comments. If you're on YouTube, you can have comments. I think you do have comments also uh, nowadays on Apple and Spotify, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, like this is also something to deep dive into it and have all those um, info before you start. Uh, a good storytelling, uh, it's also part of your planning, uh, the value, also, you can like do like a sheet and and do like okay today is like educate, inform, or entertain. Like de depending on the episode, maybe you want to do one by one. This is educate. This is inform. This is entertain. Or maybe you want to uh, do different segments within one episode. Very really important to follow those steps. And then, like I said, there is no there's like the, there's not like the there's not like the best platform. There is regular publishing schedule. You have to be you have to be able to publish every week, every day, every month, however you want to do it, you have to be regular. And you can you can publish and um, plan it on the, um, on the different platforms. So that's also like something to know how it works. And we're going to deep dive into it just after. So don't worry about it. Uh, appropriate and relevant guests. So if you have guests, you have to add value, engaging an interesting host, same idea. High quality production is all about the gear that I'm going to sh quickly show you just after. Uh, effective uh, podcast SEO is saying that you have to be able to rank your podcast and you have to uh, host your podcast in an, in an SEO ranked platform saying if, if your website is not good, your podcast is not, is not going to be uh, in a good environment. You have to make sure that you publish in a good environment um if you don't know what seo is is search engine optimization uh and you also have to think about call to action that like 
creating content is good, but you have to have the goal in mind. You have to, I don't know, maybe you, you want to, I don't know, give something. I don't know exactly what you want to do, but you have to have this call to action in the end. Uh, and in the end of the episode, maybe uh, in the middle, in the end, like you have to have this call to action. Uh, and also very important to tease people is to have a good podcast description. So, you know, you just have this, this vignette, also interesting to have a nice vignette, a title with good uh, with good uh, guests on it, a good description that is describing truly what the podcast is, and then boom, your audience is going to listen to you and is going to help you tremendously. Uh, here, what did it, what did you do? Uh, here, boom. Uh, where are we at? Here. Uh, how to start a museum podcast? So first, you have to decide what is your podcast going to be about who is the public and who are we supposed to um, target? What are we talking about? Are we talking about permanent connection and special events? Who's the podcast for? Is it for your employees? Is it for uh, the normal public? Is it for someone else? Uh, what is the name of your podcast? You can have maybe multiple uh, different podcasts. You can have just one podcast for your museums. Uh, very important. Something trendy, something that, that shows uh, who you are. So keep it simple as well. Uh, you have to decide. Oh, is it is it a following up? I don't remember here. Yes. Um, you have to also decide on how long the podcast will be. Uh, we recommend like 25, like 25 to 45 is an average. You can go longer if you want. Uh, there's no rules on that. It's kind of like a try and error thing. Um, Choose a podcast uh, format as well. You, do you want to do solo show, co-hosted shows? Do you want to have uh, like a documentary style podcast? You can also vary. This is going to be a part of your strategy. Very important to think about it before. Um, the, the cover art is the thumbnail that I just talked about just before. Uh, very important to have maybe your logo, maybe the people are hosting it. Um, and uh, then you have to hire a podcast producer or and and to 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 put it to to create it and 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 publish it um or you can do it by yourself uh, so essentially what's happening is that we record so this is like the podcaster and then when you have your episode you're going to publish it and we have what we call the rss feed uh, which is just basically like a link that's going to help you to publish it on your the different apps that you have over there. And from those apps, then you're going to have listeners. Uh, there is no, like, we should have the YouTube uh, logo here, but you get it. And you have what uh, what ERSS has fit here, really simple syndication. So it's sharing your podcast and platform and websites, something really easy. You put it on your website and it's done. It's shared. Um, so what did she put here? Uh, I just think we're, just, we're just going to keep that because it's just about the Eros's feed. Uh, so this, these are like the different steps, not really interesting for now, but you have those steps uh, to make that happen. Um, so podcasts are built for storytelling and connecting people uh, with complex ideas. So the idea is to take the time and and open those conversation. Well-crafted uh, museum podcasts help museums to build the bridges between their communities and collections and illuminate complex histories. So it's like like the opportunity, like opportunities are like way like over and beyond. Like you, you could it could be like like it's saying here, it could be to open a conversation with your community, it could be about a collection, it could be for your employees, it could be it's really complex. So really think about it before, because if you don't think about it, you're going to go somewhere that you don't want to be. <laughs> so really think about it, plan it uh, in a good way. So if you have any question, you can, of course, ask more questions as I try to be as concise as possible. Uh, and I'll be uh, very happy to, to answer to everything uh every questions and uh, i don't know how we can share that but i have like maybe some gear if you want me to just share it and name it and maybe give a price or maybe maybe we can do that later 
I think I we'll know. get into that in a little bit later, Maxime. Thank okay. you so much. Okay. Um, we'll do a kind of a, a, maybe a gear comparison between all of our presenters today and see what they work with and how much it costs. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. Thank you very much for having me. So I'll let you take down your slides, and then yeah. we're going to introduce a couple of our colleagues from the City of St. Catharines. Um, so Kathleen Powell is a Supervisor of Historical Services at the City of St. Catharines, where she's responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the St. Catharines Museum and Welland History Canal Center, the Morning Star Mill, and the Lakeside Park Carousel. She's worked in museums and historic sites in Niagara for the past 30 years, and has served as the chair of the Museums of Niagara Association, and is a past president of your Ontario Museum Association. She's currently the course director for our Organization and Management uh, Certificate in Museum Studies course. She's also joined today by Adrian Petrie, who's the Visitor Service Coordinator at the St. Catharines Museum and, and Welland Canal Center. He's also a public historian. He owned, holds a BA in history from Brock University and an MA in public history from Western University. Adrian has been practicing public history and heritage interpretation in heritage sites and museums for 15 years. I'll let you two take it away. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully you can all see our slides. Uh, thanks very much for having uh, Adrian and I here to participate in this webinar about podcasting in museums. Uh, we're very happy to be here to be able to share our experience with podcasting and how we use it at the St. Catharines Museum and Welland Canal Center. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about ourselves. I'll try to go through this fairly quickly. Uh, we're located in St. Catharines, Ontario, and our facility is located at Lock 3 of the Welland Canal, uh, where we also have a raised viewing platform where visitors can watch ships as they lock through the, uh, the canal. Uh, that's in addition to our museum facility. Uh, the museum is the largest museum in the Niagara region, and we have 20 full and part-time staff whose roles include collections management, public programming, exhibits, visitor services, uh, as well as uh, custodial and support. And uh, uh, I'm going to start by sharing a bit of a background about our podcast, why we chose to go with that format, how it fits within our strategic direction, and Adrian will get into the more detailed side of the technology uh, and, uh, and how, we, uh, how we actually do the, the podcast itself. Change the slide. There we go. So we have two podcast series, uh, Museum Chat Live, which began in February 2017, and One Hour in the Past, which had its inaugural episode in March 2018. Museum Chat Live is our flagship podcast, and you can see on this slide that's our our little kind of um, uh, block that shows up when you uh, when you find that podcast online. And uh, there's two sub-series as well of Museum Chat Live, VMLS via podcasts and hearing history. Uh, Museum Chat Live is essentially an offshoot and connects to the, our museum's official blog platform, which is called Museum Chat. Uh, museum Chat Live covers topics of interest to the work that we're doing. We say all things museums and how museums are evolving to meet the needs of our communities. Topics that have been covered by this podcast over the past six years that we've been offering the program include discussions about the role of museums in the community, historical connections to program, programs and exhibits currently running, uh, including a book club program we ran, marking specific anniversaries such as Victoria Day and International Women's Day, talking about the role of monuments and statues, museum myths and history. Uh, and most recently, we've added an audio version of our popular virtual museum lecture series, which is the VMLS part, uh, and Hearing History, which is a podcast, offshoot podcast, exploring the impact of sounds in our community's story. Uh, our second podcast is One Hour in the Past, and this really came about as a way for us to explore some uh, fun in our historical research work. Uh, the premise of the, this podcast is that our hosts, uh, which is Adri and I, and sometimes we've had guests on the podcast, have one hour to research a topic of our choosing. We choose the topic ahead of time, and then we come together in a discussion format to see where the maze-like research has taken us. And it's a really lighthearted way uh, for us to be able to talk about some fun history. The series has explored topics such as hats, computers, teddy bears, spices, restaurants, and many topics uh, in the time that we've been running it. Uh, it's not directly connected to our public programming, but it's a fun way to add historical content for our listeners and for us to do something we really enjoy, which is researching history. Uh, why? Why did we decide to do podcasts? Uh, on this slide is our mission and vision, and the podcast program really supports that last sentence of our vision, which is to deliver innovative programming and exhibits. 
Well, maybe not so innovative today when we started the podcast, it was certainly something relatively new in community museums. Uh, additionally, these podcasts allow us to fulfill a part of our mission where we tell the story of our community through artifacts and sharing and celebrating the cultural identity and history of the city. So this program ties very well into our strategic direction and takes our programming outside of our four walls and into the world to share what we do with as many uh, people and ways as we can to capture consumers in their preferred platforms. So these are our goals for the program when we, uh, as we kind of go through uh, the, the, uh, the program itself. Uh, and they're lofty goals that we set for ourselves when we started the podcast programs. And they're still relevant today and the driving force behind why we continue to offer this program. Museum chat live format over six years has taken on many different styles and topics and is very flexible and can actually evolve quite well with our strategic uh, direction as it evolves. Uh, we're doing a new strategic plan, so we'll be tying it into the new strategic plan, just like we did into the last one. So now I'm going to pass the presentation off to Adrian, who can tell you more about how specifically uh, these are being used in public programs, but also talk about the tech side of, uh, of how we do the podcasting here at the St. Catharines Museum. I think you'll have to operate my the slides for me, Kathy, so that's okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, th with this is really talking about how we make a podcast episode. There's no right or wrong way to do this. This is just how we do it. And if you want to do it a different way, go for it. So um, our little sort of agenda for this is uh, looking at um, the idea, the script, recording, editing. Uh, we have a pretty um, robust approval process <laughs> here at the City of St. Catharines. Uh, you may not. Uh, and then uh, also posting, scheduling, and promoting. So um, it's pretty basic. We uh, Our most recent episode of One Hour in the Past um, it's on dictionaries, <laughs> um, which sounds, sounds, uh, what did we say? Sim simultaneously boring and cool. Uh, so we just start with a script. Um, you can see like when we get to, um, the fourth segment and the fifth segment, it's really just like discussion. Um, so there's, that's all sort of unscripted, but we have a couple of things to talk about beforehand, like our land, land acknowledgement, um, uh, this episode, I decided to put in an ad for hearing history so that people listening to our podcast go to the other one. So you can see there's a, um, after the cold open, there's a, an ad for hearing history there. So um, in the square brackets, I often just put like what's what what's in between me or Kathleen talking. So you can see at the end of the ad, like put in the clip from Foghorn and that just makes sure that like we leave a little bit of space and also like a little bit of editing room for that clip, but also like make sure that we don't like not leave enough space for editing uh, when we get when we get to the editing room. So on the next slide, we'll talk a little bit how we get into recording. And uh, that's not me, that's Kathy. Are you going to go to the next slide, Kathy? There we go. OK, great. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we use Audacity to record. Audacity is an open source program. Um, so you might have to talk to your IT department, depending on what kind of setup you have at your museum. Um, but it's a very simple editing program. You can record in the program and edit the audio. You, As you can see, we have a bunch of different channels. Uh, you or there, you can have a bunch of different tracks in your in your um, setup. Uh, so what we do uh, generally for one hour in the past, it might change if we have guests. But for Kathleen and I, um, I'll be and the picture on the right is my desk, like your like my view of my my computer and my microphone. Um, and Kathleen's is very similar. So Kathleen will be in her office, which she is right now, and I'll be in my office. Um, and then we'll meet on Teams or Zoom. Uh, and actually record both in Zoom and both on Audacity. And what I found, we used to just record on Zoom, especially in the early days of um, COVID lockdowns, we just recorded on Zoom. And what I found is like, you you can tell probably just from listening to me that there's not a lot of sound quality in the Zoom platform. There's like not a lot of bass. It can be very tingy. Um, if there's, if there's conversation often, like you'll get clipped words at the ends where 
you interrupt each other um, and like the little green box go doesn't isn't as fast as we are uh, to to catch who's talking. So we record simultaneously um, on Zoom as a backup, and then we use the Audacity audio so that it's a really good quality audio. Um, and we record separately and we record over Zoom that way, even though like Kathy's office is right behind that wall, um, so that we get the best quality sound and that's the this is the practice that we use for this particular podcast we do some other things for our other podcasts and hearing history and for uh, discussion or interview style podcasts um, for museum chat live so those are different things but this is this is one particular setup and I, I like to mention that we do that and then sync the audio in audacity and pop in so that picture uh, if you go to the next slide Kathy you can see here like that episode that I gave you the script for. This is, so the very bottom, I think you can hopefully can see my mouse. This is like, uh, I think that's some intro music. And then uh, this is like the little, oh no, this, yeah. And then this is um, probably the ad. I should have marked it, but this is the ad, me saying, hey, here's an episode of Hearing History. And then this is uh, Sean's voice doing his Hearing History. And then these two big blocks are the, are the foghorn. Very exciting. Uh, and then we go into the regular episode. There's some music down here to introduce into our intro. So that's just very simple, very basic. Um, the tools here are all very uh, intuitive. And if you don't have any experience, there's lots of... Um, tutorials on YouTube, but it's, it's imagine editing something. That's basically what it is. So we'll go to the next slide. Um, so after we edit and put our things together, we um, uh, usually the hosting platforms require an MP3. So export the MP3 and load it up on all of our platforms. Um, so we put in a little bit of uh, text. So the picture on the left is our is a, a basic WordPress uh, page. And we we use WordPress for a variety of reasons, mostly because we have over 500 subscribers to our blog. So we don't wanna ignore that uh, that audience, but also that Museum Chat start, Museum Chat Live started as a, as a complimentary podcast to the blog. So um, that all kind of goes together in like in that little uh, world. Um, <clears throat> and also WordPress feeds our Apple, uh, Apple podcasts feed. And then we also use SoundCloud. So SoundCloud's on the right. Um, and that uh, is very basic. Again, like what's your title? Uh, you can put in some hashtags. Uh, um, you can put in a description and a caption and all that stuff. Um, there's also options. I like SoundCloud a lot, uh, a little bit better than WordPress because you don't have to have an account with SoundCloud to hear a private podcast. So for approvals, it's really handy since two or three people have to listen to this before it goes live and before it goes public. Um, I can schedule it and I can uh, make it private so that those people can hear the episode just in case there's something that we should maybe change or edit or, or whatever. So we'll go to the next slide there. So there's a, a wider view and you can see on the right, you can set up your categories in WordPress. Um, and some other websites, I'm sure. Uh, again, we use WordPress because we had already been using WordPress. We've had a blog for 10 years almost, which is, which is crazy. Uh, and so the when I go to categories in Jetpack, uh, the um, which is like the sort of the 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 um, the group of settings that you want to uh, select for your post, um, the STC Museum podcast is set up to go to Apple. So if I click that, it, regardless of what the category is, it'll go there. And then it also categorizes it in WordPress. So we click one hour in the past to make sure that the episode goes to that category in WordPress. It ends up on Apple. And then our RSS feed, if you go to the next one, Kathy, our RSS feed is uh, mostly set up through SoundCloud. So that SoundCloud is our host and that pushes to Spotify and Google. So we're on Spotify, Google, and Apple, as well as SoundCloud. We get lots of listens just through SoundCloud and then um, also on WordPress, which goes to the subscribers. So we're kind of, we kind of like um, Frankenstein a little bit just because of um, we didn't want to abandon the blog. And so we just kind of like put a couple of things together and it works for us. It works for our listeners. Um, you're welcome to use it or not use it, but you do need some sort of RSS feed host and SoundCloud is a is an excellent, I find a really easy to use, excellent um, 
host for that. I'm sure Maxine might have uh, other suggestions as well to, to host our test feeds. So we'll go to our next slide. Uh, yeah, and this is what it looks like. So uh, once it's approved and you can schedule it or just post it, uh, depending on what you're up to, I kind of just treat it as part of the rest of our social media uh, suite. So um, a podcast is like a lecture, is like a, 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 a reel, is like a, a photo. Um, so it all gets kind of worked into our general social media schedule. Um, uh, and so, it, you know, uh, schedule it for a particular day on a day that maybe a blog isn't coming out so that our subscribers aren't getting, you know, two or three emails. Um, and uh, yeah, you can go to the next slide, Kathy, and, and um, it kind of looks like this, which is really nice. So it's nice to have, like for us, we have a bunch of different podcasts. So then rather than just having our, our uh, the, the, the user side of the page um, have different uh, graphics. We have matching graphics. So we just came up with a little logo, very basic, very generic microphone podcast logo, uh, but it works for us. And we uh, went with STC Museum Podcast instead of some other name, mainly because all of our handles and all of our stuff is STC Museum. So it's just easy for people to find and, and, uh, and, and read. But you can see on Spotify, which is the, the bottom right, that those graphics, those little graphics are actually the title slides for the lectures. <clears throat> so they're really hard to see on this slide, but those those graphics are uploaded with the podcast on uh, uh, SoundCloud. So SoundCloud not only reads the the um, the podcast, but it also carries off over the graphics to the platforms that support the graph graphics. So it's kind of like a nice uh, nice nice thing there, which is really cool. Okay. Um, so some lessons learned, I'm sure Kathy will want to join me again to talk some about it. Uh, you coming back, Kathy, to chat with me or should I just, I'll just read them. Okay, so scripting is important to keep the podcast on track and a reasonable length. That's really important for people like I'm sure that most of the audience are on the programming side of podcasting and we all love talking, uh, but not everyone <laughs> loves listening to us for hours and hours and hours. So reasonable length is great. This was my, uh, my, my yeah. lesson learned. I, all the rest are Adrian's, but this one at the top was mine because I am not good with scripting. And the first time we did this, oh my gosh, I'm, I've gone back. Sorry. Oh yeah. And now um, you're open that Spotify link. That's funny. Okay. Go back. Sorry. <laughs> I don't have it listed. I don't have, I didn't write these down. Yeah. Um, we, we know what we're doing most of the time. There we go. Uh, there we go. Okay, great. Um, so, so yeah, there we go. And that's why I need to be scripted because I'll do something like that. <laughs> go ahead, Adrian. Yeah, I think like know thyself <laughs> is probably yeah. the best uh, thing for that. I mean, if you aren't comfortable talking in front of people, you probably aren't comfortable uh, talking on a podcast. And so um, it might be not the format for you, but maybe it's a format for somebody else. You can do the scripting, you can do the tech, but maybe you get somebody else to host or the opposite. Maybe you're not a scripter and you need somebody like Kath Kathleen, for example, does all the ideas and I do all the tech for this particular, for our particular podcast. Um, so just know know thyself, I think is a, it's a good thing. Good quality recording is pretty important for enjoyable listening. I don't know. The, I think the main thing that you might find uh, I know Angela is as well, but Kathleen and I are um, podcast listeners first. We really enjoy podcasts ourselves. And so if you've listened to uh, a low budget podcast and the 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 audio recording is not good quality, it's quite frustrating. Um, so good tech is important, but also good recording spaces. So think about what's in your space. For example, there's a really nice, our library is a really nice room to record in, but the clock ticks really loudly and so we have to remove the clock to record in that space otherwise it will be ticking in the background uh, along with uh, don't forget about speaking practices pronunciation is important you're recording this and it's going out onto the internet forever so don't forget about your pronunciation uh, try very to vary topics uh, Maxine was talking a little bit about this to wider your audiences you don't need to do an entire episode of uh, or an entire season of one type of episode you can mix it up a little bit uh, consistency in releasing episodes is also helpful so museum chat live we usually try to we find that six to eight episodes is manageable for our um, 
for our program load because we do a lot. We do videos, we do blogs, we do like everything. So we're not only podcasting. Um, and then uh, one hour in the past is six episodes per season, usually released every two weeks in the summertime. So that's it. So just stay consistent and and it's usually helpful to record a couple of episodes before you release them. So you've got a little bank of releasing just in case somebody goes on vacation or something happens, you get sick, you can't talk. Then you've got a couple of weeks of buffer to catch up if uh, if you're behind. Uh, YouTube has plenty of tutorials. So we're not the only ones doing this. Everybody is podcasting and most podcasters like to talk about podcasting. So they're all talking about it on YouTube. So just go to YouTube if you get stuck. Keep an eye on new platforms, of course. Uh, YouTube podcast is a little new, uh, newer than some of the others. Uh, Twitter changes things seemingly like every couple of months. Uh, and that has impacts on other platforms. It's had an impact on WordPress for sure. So just keep an eye on things and uh, uh, background management. Things don't things on the internet don't live forever as much as we'd love for them to never change. Um, they do change. So just keep an eye on things. Keep keep maybe subscribe to a, a tech news page or a podcast news page just to get the latest news and just be like someday they'll get rid of RSS feeds and you won't be able to get your podcast out there. And like that, that's my greatest fear. So just keep an eye on that. Um, do what works for you and your team, like all social media. Don't, don't try to do stuff that isn't going to work for you. It's, it's okay to explore and it's okay to experiment. Um, but definitely, you know, be smart about what you're doing and use your resources well. Uh, and uh, really, I think for Kathy and I, it's just like doing any other museum program, just in a different format. Um, so it's not scary as, as most people might think it is. Uh, we've got some links there for all of our stuff. Listen to it. <laughs> okay. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. You too. We'll make sure that those links are shared with everybody when the recording goes out as well. Um, so thank you for your time and exciting to hear about all those things you've been doing for so many years. Uh, I'm going to invite uh, Angela Bobier to join us next. And Angela Bobier grew up in Wallacetown within the heart of the Talbot settlement and has a diploma in cultural resource management from the University of Victoria. Angela's work background is in retail and direct sales, team building, customer service, and marketing. In 2009, she was elected to the Tyrconnell Heritage Society Board of Directors and held the positions of membership and marketing chairperson, education day chairperson, vice president, and president for taking on a staff role of cultural manager in June 2012. Angela was given the title of executive director in 2022, her 10th anniversary at Bacchus Page House Museum. Uh, good morning, Angela. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll let you take it away with your slides or with your presentation. Thanks. Yes, I have no slides. We're, we're just going to do audio for podcasting. <laughs> um, so I know why you um, had the two different museums on. So I wanted to explain um, who we are. So Turconnell Heritage Society, um, we're independent and we're a nonprofit um, incorporated in 1994 in order to operate um, Bacchus Page House Museum. So we've got a house museum, an agricultural center, barn, outbuildings, heritage gardens, and we're leasing our portion of John E. Pierce Provincial Park. So our podcast is scripted, which is also different. Um, it's narrated by one person, so that's me. Um, and then sometimes we've also been collecting oral history interviews. So we've just used those with an intro and an outro, and they've been a podcast um, series that we've been publishing lately. Um, we chose the name Life in the Talbot Settlement. So I think so that we could widen the audience and what we talk about actually, because um, the Talbot Settlement actually spans the entire North Shore of Lake Erie, rather than just where we are in Western Elgin County, and we knew that would open us up to more stories and more people, and um, we got the name from an event that we used to run, um, one of our reenactments. So I'm the host for the podcast, and Caitlin edits and does a lot of the research, and all of the staff ends up writing some of the scripts and uh, doing research. We figured out that it costs us about $200 in staff wages for one episode, um, which is about four to five hours, uh, depending on who's doing the work. And that's recording, editing, um, plus the promotion. And what you need to do is just decide whether you can sustain a weekly podcast as we've been doing. Um, we have had times where it's been bi-weekly and that's just based on whether we had staff here um, or maybe monthly works better um, or as Adrian and Kathleen pointed out, they have seasons. So maybe in the summertime, they've got six or eight. Um, so you can do it however it works, but you need to kind of make a decision ahead of time. 
Now, luckily we have a volunteer who is a musician. So he recorded the music that we've got, um, bagpipes and some Scottish and Irish music um, that we've used. And um, we designed our own logo. We use that as the template for each episode for the little artwork, the little squares that you usually see. And uh, then we just use that on Instagram and all our social media and everything's in Canva, um, Canva for nonprofits. So if, you, if you're paying for Canva, you shouldn't be. Um, you can get that for free for designing everything um, if you're a nonprofit. One essential thing I'd say for starting a podcast is, um, I think Adrian mentioned to have a bunch in the bank. We wrote seven complete episodes. Um, we had them all scripted. And then I think we had recorded and edited at least four before we went live with any of them. Um, and I really suggest doing that all the time if you can get ahead. I know I'm in crunch time right now. There's a bunch that I have to record and um, then we'll be ahead again. So we need to do that. We also recorded um, at least four little commercials. Um, so we have Caitlin do those. So it's not just my voice also doing commercials. And one was to follow um, all of our social media. One commercial was to go to our online gift shop. Another is to um, how to purchase a membership um, online. And and how to donate to the museum. So we did that partly because we were in the pandemic. And so this would have been the first year of the pandemic that we started the podcast. And that was essential just because we didn't know um, if we could be open. As you know, everyone kept getting on lockdown. So this was just the way to keep the museum in the forefront of everyone's mind and to give them content. Um, I know we're gonna talk about gear next so i'll skip that part we started um there was a lot of research done on what to use for our rss feed and we actually went with anchor.fm which recently has been changed to spotify for podcasts and it's free um, i think at the time we started though there was a limit on how long your podcast would be but luckily that's about the best length for us anyway so we find 20 minutes is perfect um, and i think we figured out that's uh five pages um typed in word for a script. So um, that's how we figure out if we've got one that's long enough. If we've got something that's longer, um, I know I've done a grave situation, which was talking about some of our different cemeteries and they required longer episodes. So we just do part one this week, part two next week. Um, and that's what we do uh, if it's a little bit longer. And then we actually use YouTube because I know that for me as well, um, with YouTube, I sometimes just walk away. It's playing on my phone, but I'm just using the audio portion of it. So what we've done, because I actually record in the middle of the night when my husband and the dogs are asleep, because otherwise it's too loud. Um, and I have to record at my house because it's always too loud here as well. So we actually just record then, and I don't want to be on camera because um, I'm in my pajamas. So we just do a slideshow. So we get some pictures, put them up, they just slide through and the audio is playing. And I know one of the questions that we were given earlier was what are our most popular episodes? And what we decided to do, because I do listen to a lot of podcasts is I really like the ones that have an intro episode. And this is maybe something we could redo again um, because this was our very first one. And it's 10 minutes and it's just an introduction of um, who we are as a society and a museum, um, what our podcast is going to be about, what is the Talbot settlement, who's Colonel Talbot. Um, that's what we did in that first 10 minutes. So that's the most popular uh, episode we've got because usually that's where people would start. Um, but we found that I went back, I looked at our top 10 and we've got the episode on who's Colonel Thomas Talbot, um, our founding families who are Irish, um, our episode on the Indigenous people of our uh, region and our Scottish settlers. So they are the biggest podcast. They're also some of the first set of eight that we did. And um, so I'm not surprised they're the most popular. And then in amongst that is we've got settlers who are in the Red River settlement. Um, and that tends to be one of the top 10 as well. And that's, I think, episode 24. So it just depends on your topic. Um, there's a lot of people researching their ancestors uh, who were in the Red River area. Um, you might have some good podcast lessons um, for people who support you, but they don't understand. So you're gonna have to give some lessons on what a podcast is 
and how to get to it. Um, I know when we first started, probably the first year, we had to explain that there was no video. They were going just to listen to audio. They didn't understand about downloading it or not downloading it. Um, so yeah, depending on your demographics of people, you may have to answer some questions. Um, and just the difference between a podcast, a blog, um, a YouTube video, other media. Um, so that was kind of interesting. And I always suggest you reuse your content. So we don't, well, sometimes we write specifically for the podcast, but lately what we've been doing is uh, we've got a committee working on a new book. And so of course there's, I'm calling them articles, but there's portions of the book that have to be researched and written. So once one of those is done, we're, we're taking it as the staff, turning it into podcast episodes and recording those. So two for one. Um, the other way to reuse your content is to post your show notes um, on your blog, which um, Adrian and Kathleen do as well, because we've had a blog since oh, before me, I think 2008. Um, so we've been using that consistently. So show notes go in there. And at the top, there's a link to listen to the podcast that would send you over to Spotify. Um, there's also a link if you wanted to watch and that would send you to the YouTube video. Um, in the YouTube video, you also have a link. You can go back to the blog or you can go to listen to the podcast. So it's circular on the podcast description. You can go back to the blog to read the show notes um, or you can go watch on the YouTube. So just think about all the links that you can have on there and people will find the way they want to consume your podcast um, in there. When each episode goes live, um, we schedule ours. Also, by the way, we're Wednesdays at seven o'clock in the morning. When we first started, I did some research. At that point, someone on the internet said that's the best time to release your podcast. Probably we need to do that research again and see if it's the same time. Um, but we're still on that schedule. Um, we post to Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, any other social media. Of course, now everyone has a Threads account. Um, and they all have not just the text or the caption, but we also have a short video that I record um, at the beginning of the podcast episode, I have a short little video and uh, I will include the script for that um, in a PDF that I've given to Chris uh, to send out to everybody. So again, if you're writing for, um, or if you're researching uh, a piece that's just come into your collection or your education coordinators researching something for a program or a field trip, any of those items can be turned into a podcast episode or if it's shorter, maybe it's only five minutes long, but you've got four things that are similar, um, that can be an episode. So a lot of times we're holding ideas um, and then we're adding them. We did try and do a Q&A. So I think one of the things we can improve on um, is that we need to get listeners interacting. Um, we haven't hit that yet. We've got, I think, a good group of core listeners and we get a lot of feedback on our episodes, but that's word of mouth. Um, they'll tell us if they come to visit or I'll personally get a Facebook message from someone who knows me and they're talking about the episode, but we're not quite there getting feedback from just regular listeners. So that's something we want to work on next. And you don't have to have everything in a row, your ducks in a row, just get started. Um, but I think the key is to be consistent, choose your schedule that works for you. Um, don't get over ambitious with your schedule. Um, and then lastly, make sure you've got, if you're pre-recording, make sure you've got them in the bank and scheduled again, in case someone gets sick or there's a lockdown, uh, you never know what's gonna happen now. Um, and things just get in the way and you get busy. Um, so since we're gonna talk about gear as a group, um, I will turn it back over to Chris and I hope you guys all have lots of questions. Thank you so much, Angela. That was great. And I loved hearing your perspective on kind of uh, being a, a different site than St. Catherine's Museum, the way that you've made it work um, for you and your staff. So I'll let everybody pop back in with their cameras and microphones on, and we'll do a little bit of a round uh, around the room about talking about kind of gear and recording equipment, because I know that was one of the questions that we got in advance. Um, while we're doing this, anybody on the call who wants to put their questions into the q and I'll let you start typing now. It's a great time to get those questions flowing in, and we'll start uh, going through those as a group. So first question that we got during registration was about the types of equipment you use to record, um, how you make it work, sort of what people could invest in sort of a toolkit for podcasting. Um, 
my thought is to start with Maxime as he was the one who brought it up first today. Maxime, do you want to talk first about sort of the gear that you would use to record a podcast with? Uh, yeah, and I, and I wanted to get rid of that. I don't remember how to remove that. Uh, oh, the blur. Uh, yeah, the in the bottom right of your screen, uh, by the stop video menu, there's a little up arrow, and you should be able to deselect the blur my background option. Oh, maybe. Let me. Uh, blur. Uh, I don't remember where the... Is it back? See? Oh, my gosh. I'm so bad with it. Uh, where is it? Anyway, gallery speaker, full screen. No, it's not here. If you go to the little uh, screen with your uh, video on it, on the top right hand side, there's three three dots. Oh, if you that, click on that, that it gives thing. you the option oh, to unblur. Oh, oh that there thing. you go. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I was searching somewhere else. Wizard Sorry. of the crowd. <laughs> but, but I know what I'm doing. I know I know I'm doing a podcast. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I just I just I just changed like kind of like the setup to show I I'm well, missing plans because I'm going on holiday anyway. Uh no, just uh just a uh, a quick setup. Um uh, and I and I took notes on the different um presentation. Uh I think like the the two for one uh, episode is, is pretty good. You record one time and you have a video and a podcast, it's pretty good. I also have to think about uh, two for uh, one for maybe 15 uh, because this is an opportunity because if you do uh, one audio and one video you are like well prepared as I see you type everything so you can identify what could be good to post a, as as reels on Instagram TikToks wherever uh, the people are so that's uh, something pretty good uh, and so deep diving into the the different gear that that we use as professionals uh, you have to know that your your environment. I, I heard about the the clock knocking like too loud. Uh, this is something that you can easily get rid of and don't care about if you just spend some money. But not like I, it's not a ton for an, an organization. It's not a ton. Uh, this microphone. Uh, I'm going to give you all the names in the document. But this is like the Sennheiser MK600. It's like four hundred dollars. Uh, but it picks the sound just here, not around, just here. And so it's very easy. I was uh, in the street interviewing someone. We can have a car passing, whatever. It's not going to pick it that much. So it's pretty easy to process. Uh, well, uh, for our my, uh, for our uh, podcast, we have boom mics, of course. So the list, like the the people talking, are just like on the couch. So it's 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 helping people to talk and to be comfy. Also here, I have like a table. We put some cookies. So those are like kind of the tips to make people comfortable. Uh, and we record on a, a Tascam X8. And this is pretty good because you have four inputs. So they are like XLR inputs. They are like professionals um, inputs. Uh, it's a bit more expensive, but it's more uh, secure. Make sure that you're recording properly. And what's great with it is that it's very portable in the sense that you, you, it's uh, battery operated. You can also put an external battery uh, so you can recharge it. Like, so you could have like like it, it, like uh, a battery life like extended to, to whatever. Uh, and it's very, very nice in the sense that you can also uh, move those microphone like let, let's say I don't have I don't have that you can get rid of it and you're kind of like on the go uh, what's what's pretty neat is that you can now remove that and you can put it that way I do it quickly you can do it that way and now you have like a podcast setup so you can put out you have you have like a, uh, an input here put on a tripod and now you can do a podcast just like that so it's kind of like an on the go so if you have to do a podcast and you just want to take that you just take it boom done uh this is like six, 600 bucks uh around that uh, so it's not a tiny investment but uh if you take care of it you put it on a nice case and protect it and you have like set uh, um built-in menus also uh, uh, with audio presets, you can put some audio presets for your podcast, like applause or whatever you want to change. You can you can change it. You can have two, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, but yeah, like this is this is kind of like the gear that we use. And as for the edit, 
Um, I would say that there is that there is two things. It's mostly for video. Yeah, you have one that is free uh, called CapCut. Uh, it's made by TikTok, the, the big company. They made that uh, video editor that is totally free and you have auto caption on it. So you don't have to worry about it. You have to double check in case because it's AI. So maybe, you know, I'm French. So maybe sometime it doesn't pick like the right word. I have to change it, uh, but shouldn't be a problem for you. Uh, and you also have another website I, uh, that I will include, which is vidio.com. And this website is is adding uh, those trendy subtitles that are like popping yellow kind of thing. You have all that. It's auto caption, very easy. You can do auto emoji as well. It's going to generate those emoji wherever you want. So those are uh, the type of things. And uh, as for the feedback from listeners, from the last uh, lady that talked, uh, the, the question is, is how do you promote it also on site? Do you talk about your podcast on site? Do you have uh, uh, flyers and stuff on site that you say, hey, we have a podcast. You can come on it. Another idea, you can also do um, museum. I, I don't know if it's a word for uh, in, in English, but museum for noobs. So saying that, uh, hey, let's, let's do like a podcast episode with people that don't necessarily know about history or whatever subject you want to talk about, but your audience, I'm, I'm not your audience, I don't go to museums too much, but uh, you can do that with, with, with your people and open the door. Uh, and that, that could be a great way to have feedbacks as well. Excellent. Thank you so much, Maxime. Awesome. I guess we'll continue on a bit of our, our gear round table there. Uh, Adrian and Kathleen, I think you have a different setup that you use for mics. I think you're USB based. We have a couple, well, we have a couple of different um, options. So we have, we have a a less expensive version of what Maxime was just talking about um, for when we're in the field or if we're doing an interview or if we want some uh, audio from the world. And then we have, so that's like out and about. And then we have our studio sound and our studio sound is the wonderful Snowball, uh, which is very affordable. Um, we, they're like 60, 60 ish bucks or so yeah and it's usb based uh so it plugs right into your computer um and yeah so that's it excellent and then following and uh, continuing the circle here uh angela what kind of equipment do you use for your recording um well we also use um audacity and we just have it set up like on, on our laptop and um you can edit in there and i think we did for a while but because we needed the whole adobe suite for something else. Um, I'm pretty sure Caitlin's using Adobe Audition now um, for editing, but we just got um, a pack of three microphones that a, a singer would have. I think they might be, if you guys just got one, you got, I think it's $30. Um, and it plugs into, I call it the red box, but it's called the uh, Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. That's uh, the third generation. It's a USB audio interface. Um, and that was recommended by our musician because I, didn't get information before I purchased and ended up with a 10 channel mix. I don't even know what I bought. Anyway, it was too, <laughs> it was too much. I know. Are you laughing? Cause you've also spent, yeah. yeah, I did. I found a musician to buy it. So we got our money back, which was great. Um, so I think the, the Scarlet, I looked it up on Amazon, but you can get it in other places and uh, we're past prime days now. So I think it's, it's under $300 with the tax um for the scarlet so for less than four hundred dollars we got set up um and we're happy with our quality um i mean it, it can always improve and we can always learn more um and luckily we had a grant at the time um i don't remember which one but it is department of canadian heritage but i can't remember which project it was part of um and yeah what i've done to cover ongoing cost is every time I apply for a grant with um, that it fits into, I've made sure that the staff wages in that grant cover continuing the podcast. Um, and that's how we've been able to, to keep going. But yeah, so for $400 or less, um, we were able to get started. Amazing. Thank you so much, everybody. So if anybody's trying to furiously take notes, don't worry. Uh, we'll get all that information and the specifics of all the gear that people are using and get that out to all of you so you don't have to try to uh, work backwards from kind of serial numbers that we're reading out here live. So no worries to anybody listening. 
Um, one of the questions that we had come in was about um, the use of things like oral history or your lecture series. So maybe I'll start with Adrian and Kathleen. Um, I know that you're doing a conversion of a lecture series um, to a podcast. What have you learned um, from that? What are the challenges of using kind of pre-recorded audio, not necessarily destined for a podcast in a podcast? Uh, in terms of challenge, well, the reason why we did it was because a, a, a few listeners requested the audio from the lectures into the podcast format because they would prefer to, they like podcasts and they'd rather, you know, listen to it while they're doing their laundry or walking the dog. Um, additionally, podcasts are small, smaller files than like streaming YouTube. So my my mom actually, who has crappy internet in the middle of nowhere, asked for asked for a podcast format. So thanks, mom. Uh, the uh, challenge is that especially when we had guests, um, so like if it was a a lecture that Kathy or I did or one of our other staff, we're all on our same microphone, so the audio quality is a lot better. But our guests might be recording from their home um, with just their like microphone lap, uh, my, uh, the laptop microphone. So just um, you know taking a listen to the whole episode as a whole and just making sure that like the Zoom the Zoom recording isn't uh, horrible to listen to and maybe just fixing it up a little bit in Audacity and there's tools there for that. So it's not really a, a challenge um, other than other than just making sure the, the audio quality is good, basically. And Angela, you did some work with uh, producing oral histories for your podcast. And was that, were those designed for the podcast or are you trying to uh, repurpose and sort of uh, front end some uh, some of the oral histories into the podcast. We're we're definitely reusing content. Um, you know, when I applied for the grant to do um, to collect oral histories, part of it was that they would be um, put through on the podcast and on YouTube. So um, I think I think the only issue is they're not getting as many listeners um, that I've noticed. Um, I think maybe people are confused because they're just getting a little intro and then someone else is talking and it is set up like an, an interview. So one of us has asked a question. Um, I think they're, I think oral history is better format for YouTube. Um, I think we've been getting more hits on that. Um, the original idea was to um, take snippets from an oral history. And like if we were doing, I don't know, a Christmas episode, you could take snippets from the oral histories and insert them like, oh, this is so-and-so talking about their Christmas as a child. Um, but we've put them just full form um, with, with some editing in them. We've used those recently. Um, yeah, I probably wouldn't do that again. I think I would keep them with snippets, um, but we'll see. We're finding that the longer a podcast episode is up for us because they're not time sensitive, the the more listeners they're getting. So. These ones are new the last few months. In a year from now, they might have been listened to quite a bit. So we'll we're still assessing on that. Excellent. We have a question in the QA about, I guess you might call it field recording, um, but going out and recording a podcast from a walking tour, either audio or video. Any experience around the table? I don't think anybody's done any, has anybody done any outside work? Uh, yeah, we we um a combination of all of the above, I guess. Um, so for, it's tricky because like, what is it for? But it, it, I'll just stick, mm, uh, uh, it, <laughs> it's different for each thing, <laughs> but we have different tech that we would use for video. Um, and so our, like our YouTube videos are usually a different uh, style. I'm a firm believer in uh, um, using the right platform for the right thing. So I can never do a, a slide talk that could be a guided hike basically, but um yeah, so you can you can the, the possibilities are endless, and so you just have to find it like figure out what you want to do, plan it out, practice, and then record it and see how it looks. Um, you could do a whole walking tour and a podcast on your iPhone uh, or on your smartphone. So like it it doesn't have to be um, uh, fancy, like depending on what you're doing. Um, but yeah, we have recorded in the field, and and it's fun and great. Uh, it's less fun in January than it is in October, but that's how it goes. I don't know if that answers. I don't. I like. What is? Is there more specific to that question? Like, yes, we've done them, and yes, they're really fun, and you should do them too. Did you want to talk about uh, the audio of the in the field? Because we did have over the years some some challenges with that, which we've overcome, basically. 
yeah, there's a couple of different options that you can do depending on what you're you're using. Like again, <laughs> filming in outside is really fun. So uh, especially for like background noises. So like August is really bad for cicadas. So you're gonna have that sound. So it's like, is it, does this particular episode belong outside? Is it something that that sound can add to? If it's taking away, then why are we doing it outside? Um, we had some challenges with sort of like finding the right uh, microphone to go, especially with like uh, video, making sure that we get uh, the person talking and not the car driving behind them or uh, the, the construction vehicle backing up and beeping the whole time. Um, so we've we've added a couple of things and in the field, we mostly use cameras, but uh, you can find equipment that has like a, like Maxime was talking about, like very specific directional um, microphones like lapel mics and stuff like that uh, versus like a wide range uh, shotgun style um, uh, a recording sort of radius. Um, and then also like you're, we've com sort of combined a bunch of different um, recorders at the same time. So we might have two or three microphones going and then we'll put all that audio together, sync it up and, and, and get a really well-rounded thing depending on what it is. So we did a during the the lockdown we did a we recorded our uh, spirit walks that we do in the cemetery um and they're theatrical in nature so they were fairly easy to do um and we so they're on youtube you can watch them but uh we had to like sort of rig a bunch of different tech together to make it work and without spending any money because like remember back then when budgets were frozen um yeah, so <laughs> we used the existing equipment that we had so uh yeah there's there's lots of different options and I think it's just like planning ahead and practicing um we actually just took a little field trip this morning before the the thing to check out our next site it's another construction site so that's great uh some challenges there with uh with noise and uh and also some you know, curious neighbors, people come and interrupt you uh, while you're doing it. It's the same as doing anything live. It's just you recording it. So I guess, yeah, plan ahead and practice. We've and also it. done some outdoor issues. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have a heritage farm show every Labor Day weekend. And what we usually do is try and get some of the owners of the antique classic equipment and tractors to just tell the story of their. So what we've done is we just have a $60 digital recorder. We have tried the lapel mic, but people keep touching it. So that's been annoying. Um, so yeah. And um, what we did, we taped it to a ruler yeah. and just stuck it in their, we just stuck it in their face. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, great. because the lapel mic didn't work, right? So you have to rig up what you need. Um, it records right on there. And and same thing for the oral histories where we're recording with, we, we have a video camera, but it's 10 years old. So everyone's using their phones now. And the secondary or the better audio is this digital recorder. So in case one fails, at least you have the interview, um, but it works great outside. We didn't have, I mean, it's a tractor show you are going to have, but that fits in into the theme. So I agree that you have to figure out is this something I should be recording outside or, um, yeah. yeah, should I just wait and record it later? Yeah. As for, as for, uh, I would say the, what's very important, like talking about video podcasts outside, uh, what you have to focus on is, is really the audio and not the video. The video quality could be good, but if the audio is not following, it's, it's going to, to be pretty bad. And so the thing is that like I, I was talking about professional inputs. The thing is that if you if you want to do a video um, and you want to input it directly uh, on the camera, you have to make sure that you have the inserts. This is not really an expensive camera, like a thousand five hundred. Like it's not very expensive anyway. You can you can do it directly on the camera and record directly on the camera with good microphones. But if you just have like a ten years old. Uh, uh, camera just like you that the only thing that you're going to have as a problem is that you're going to have to use that kind of like little inputs uh, if you want to make sure to record and so what i would what i would recommend for you is just to use like like you said bluetooth microphone so she said lav mic i think um so th this is this this would be i think the the way to do it 
And, and if you if you can't input it, in, but you have like a, just an external recorder, you can also record with your phone or your camera, which has a uh, built-in microphone and record with that kind of uh, gear and then uh, synchronize it then in post-production. That's also something possible. Yeah. We have like different ways, um, but yeah. Excellent, thank you so much, everybody. I, I did not know that you all had done things outside. That's incredible <laughs> to have that really yeah. recording that podcast like from the on-site uh, environments like that. Uh, I know Angela talked a little bit about this, but I wondered if Kathleen and Adrian, you wanna talk about kind of your most popular episodes, whether that's by, if you, you measure your success by number of views or amount of comments or most new listeners, what would you say is the content that's worked the best um, for you and your listening audience? We had a, a very popular mini series about uh, bridges on the canal, uh, which is sort of a visual medium, but the storytelling was excellent and was actually done by one of our volunteers who loves the bridges. So um, whether that was like the sort of the um, partnership of uh, sort of audience development and, in, and introducing, you know, his friends, family, and his, sort of his audience to that, to the podcast format. Um, another, uh, Kathy, I have a favorite episode. My favorite episode <laughs> is um, our, our International Women's Day episode from a few years ago. Um, we have uh, a, a woman in our in our history, uh, Lillian Phelps, who was uh, a very popular orator and speaker, and she traveled all over North America. And she wrote an article in 1905 about equal pay for women. And uh, so we had our local um, Women's Chamber of Commerce come in and read the article into the podcast. And it's probably our most listened to, but it is the most satisfying museum podcast for me because it's like, it's really cool to hear women read this amazing article, it's significant politically today um, about equal pay. And it's, it's, there's some really great lines because the Lillian Phelps was such an excellent writer and orator, some really great lines that, uh, that were really nice to hear um, rather than just read. Uh, so it was really poignant for us to have women from uh, the local chamber of commerce come and read it. And that's probably our most popular, but it's definitely my most favorite uh, historic. I, sometimes they call it historical juice. Like it's got the most historical juice. Um, it's like, yeah, this is, that's the, that's the one that I talk about a lot. It's a very nice one. There's other good ones, but that's, that's the one. Yeah. Some of our earliest podcasts we did uh, related specifically to this book club program that we had, and they did get good uh, good traction because of the people that were kind of following along with the book club. Um, and then, unsurprisingly, the uh, the Spanish flu episode of the uh, virtual museum lecture series podcast has has been doing okay uh, because it's such a kind of <laughs> now topic, I guess. <laughs> But uh, it's long, so you have to have the intestinal fortitude to be able to to listen to uh, <laughs> to that <laughs> long podcast for sure. <laughs> Out of fairness, Angela, do you have a favorite episode of your podcast that you like to share and talk about? As kind of the the one that you're most proud of, maybe. Um, gosh, the one the. It, it probably isn't my favorite. If I'd looked before you asked me the question, um, but I really the ones that are popping to my mind are called a grave situation. And um, I'm, besides being at the museum, I'm also the chairperson for our municipal heritage committee. And we do doors open every other year. Well, during the pandemic, we did cemeteries because we didn't know it, what the deal would be in October. So we, each person on the committee had a couple cemeteries and we had to um, research the symbolism on six gravestones and then a little story behind each one. So um, with permission, I then came back to the museum. I think, I think it's three episodes long because there was 10 cemeteries. Um, and I did it in the idea that you could go, it would be kind of a scavenger hunt, but you could take the podcast, listen to it on your phone while you were in the cemetery and do a tour, or you could just listen. Um, but the little stories that went along with the, the people, because they weren't necessarily the most popular people or, um, you know, high-ranking residents of of Dutton Dunwich um they were just they had the most interesting symbolism on their grave marker um so it ended up that we were talking about people that we probably normally don't ever talk about um so that was kind of an interesting uh, and again repurposing things you're doing in content so um those are the ones that I I like um 
but I think the Red River Rebellion that I talked about, um, it's because we've got a handwritten history from the son of someone who was there. Um, he wrote out his entire, his dad's story. So I just read it um, as part of the podcast. Um, so I think same thing as, as Adrian and Kathleen mentioned, um, when you can actually just read someone else's words and get that out there instead of it just being stuck in your storage room, um, then that I think that's what people like. So I, I don't doubt that that maybe is why that's one of the more popular ones. We can maybe borrow Adrian's term of calling that historical juice. Historical juice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's got, yeah. It's got yeah. the historical juice right in it. Um, it's my I know, new motto. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> uh, and I know Angela talked a little bit about this, but I wonder if Kathleen and Adrian, you want to share about the kind of the hours invested and in kind of the timelines and how you produce your episode from a resourcing perspective. Right. Do you want me to go ahead, Adrian? Yeah, sure. I mean, I could add in if you want. Yeah, I think that I would say that the, the amount of time is probably so very similar to Angela per episode um, for most of them. Um, and, uh, you know, I haven't actually quantified the number as far as how much it costs in a hundred dollars kind of thing, but I would say it's uh, just based on who it is that's doing the podcast, it's probably a, on the higher end of <laughs> of that amount but I would say like it's a couple of hours like one hour in the past obviously we're doing an hour of research each and then on top of that is the uh the recording and the um so that's like an hour or maybe ish uh depending on how long the episode is and then uh the uh the post-production Adrian would be able to to speak to that because he uh he does all of that work yeah it's it's definitely prep heavy so lots of like if it's not our individual research there's a there's a script to organize and research to do and and that kind of stuff um the uh it's definitely a practice I, I find like if we have if if it's been a few weeks since I've edited an episode it takes a minute to just what am I doing right uh but if you do it all the time it like the editing goes a lot faster you can also the more prep you do probably the less less editing you have to do um unless you stumble over your words a lot uh so um, it's, uh, it's, it's, yeah, definitely prep heavy. I would say like, I can get an episode out in like, from, from like when we stop recording to editing to release probably like a VMLS episode now takes about 45 minutes. And the longer side of that is just getting it onto all the platforms. So, um, rather than the actual editing itself and like waiting for the MP3 to export can depending on how big because like oh, yeah. the lecture files are huge right and I'm guilty of that I think my lecture my the last one that I posted I think was my lecture and I think it was 90 minutes so it's like that's a big file it's going to take a while to export so the uh and if you're depending on what program you're using uh so it's yeah if we I think that the if people are worried about like the sales pitch to uh somebody who's a little bit more numbers conscious than Kathleen and I are <laughs> we would be programming something else anyway so it's this or it's something else we wouldn't be like do it doing like you know what I mean like we'd be doing this so the amount of time to me doesn't really matter because I'd be programming anyway so the go. one thing that we also did uh spend some money on at the outset was we paid for some uh sound yeah. some music uh, oh, that yeah, we can use music. for yeah. one hour in the past and for Museum Chat Live. Uh, <laughs> we were very choosy about the music we wanted to have on our podcast. So, uh, and I think it, they're perfect for what we ended up using them for, but we did pay for that. Uh, and we do have a, I think we have a SoundCloud subscription uh, that we pay for. Yeah. Um, and the so, blog costs some money too. And yeah. the blog also yeah. has a, a yearly subscription, uh, but it's totally like we use that for all kinds of different things. So it's definitely like a worthwhile investment to, uh, uh, to put yeah. the money into those, those things. Yeah. We Angela got our... was lucky that she had a musician that could do it for. <laughs> we used, I know. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. I am lucky. <laughs> we use premium beat, which is now owned by Shutterstock. So it's like Shutterstock for music. Um, and that way you don't have to worry about copyright uh, and that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, Angela doesn't either because she has a musician, but uh, um, yeah. there are other things, but that's the one that we used because um, it was, it's pretty affordable and you get, what I really liked about it was that you get a suite. So you get like the full track, you get like a 10 second, a 30 second, a 60 second. And so you can use that for, and like different, like one of our, um, I think the Museum Chat Live one, you can get different loops. So it's like just the drums, it's just the guitar, it's just, so um, 
it's handy for like if you have a transition that you want to break with music then uh, that that's also handy so yeah yeah amazing thank you so much um I wonder, we had talked about Kathleen Nadrian being podcast listeners first. Is there anything that you would say that you've borrowed from other podcasts that you've brought in as a practice to say, what made, what do you really like to listen to in a podcast that you've been able to, to, to borrow or, uh, or uh, emulate and bring into your podcast to make it uh, really great for listeners? The yeah. um, number one thing is uh, the preview of the episode before it starts. So our cold open is actually a little clip of, especially when I'm in the past, we started doing this because um, the episode, like dictionaries, that's boring. <laughs> but we actually clipped, <laughs> did we clip? I think the clip that we used, this episode isn't out yet. It's going out in a couple of weeks. But uh, the clip I think we used was us talking about, this is a simultaneously cool and boring or boring yeah. and cool topic. And so we just like use like a 10 second clip at the top of the episode to encourage people to listen all the way through. Um, so that's one thing that a couple of different podcasts do just like give you that quick clip and then they go to an ad and then they, now like we don't, we, making money from our podcast isn't really a thing. I don't know what our finance department would do if we tried to make YouTube talk to our financial systems. So we, we're we not really worried about monetization, but um, we do advertise like other programs and uh, our blog and our lecture series and the other podcast as well. So um, it's not really for making money, but just like spreading awareness about the other things that we have going on, just in case that listener doesn't know. Um, and then uh, I would say just like really cool things that you can do in any, any editing program is like really sharp transitions so like fading out, fading in, um, making sure that like there's a, sometimes you want silence and sometimes you don't want silence and like there's a style to things. And so I would say like just generally there's some style that I've pulled from some of those podcasts. I think my, I think like the leader in style was probably Serial. I mean, Maxine probably listens to way more podcasts than I do, but Serial was like a leader in that like style of, of that kind of like documentary podcasting that had um use like we're using like audio clips that weren't scripted and like a mix of that so um those are kinds of influences i guess that the more podcasts you listen to the wider your uh your 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 toolkit gets yeah the one hour in the past podcast was actually inspired by a podcast i love listening to which is uh basically like a hidden history of things and they would take like a thing and that they would talk about the, uh, the the background history of those things. And I just love the idea of it. And also love the idea of just giving us a chance to just go crazy and research stuff. So there was some inspiration that was taken from, from that as well. And Angela, are you a podcast listener who's tried to emulate anybody else? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I, I clearly like the scripted <laughs> one person talking. Um, yeah yeah um yeah I mean I've always liked hardcore history um yeah. but he, I mean his are long um yeah. and he takes months <laughs> months before uh, yeah before he puts one out um but I, I do also like um I think it's Dan Snow with history hits um yeah I mean they have a whole tv network now but I like all of those because he will only ask one question and then the person just talks which which I really like um I, I think I found more things i like what not to do so it irritates me if mm. people are talking and there's music playing behind them I can't cope I just I'm like <laughs> you're done I can't so yeah so anybody who's got a podcast who's you know the whole time they're talking there's some ambiance music behind them um I don't think that's great for people who have issues paying attention um uh, and I think one that I really like and I because Kathleen mentioned the Spanish uh, influenza. Um, I really like the podcast. Um, this podcast can kill you. And it, they talk about a different disease every time. And it's just <laughs> two of them. Um, and they, they're not, a, they interact at the beginning, but the rest of it is just, um, is, is more like ours, more scripted. So somebody's got the history of the disease. Somebody's got, um, yeah. So it's, it's kind of a fun, but yeah. So I listen to everything, not just history. Excellent. Thank you so much, everybody, for all of your time. Thank you to yeah. Maxime and uh, Adrian and Kathleen and Angela for joining us. Uh, thank you to our audience for bringing such great questions as you've registered and staying with us. Uh, so you will receive a recording um, from this pod 
uh, not a podcast from our presentation about podcasts uh, very shortly <laughs> once we have a chance to uh, to get that edited and out to everybody. Um, we'll include the presenter slides, uh, links, and resources. Uh, when you leave the webinar, you'll be sent to a survey that helps us inform future PD opportunities and let us know how we did today. Um, this podcasting episode, of course, came from uh, suggestions by our uh, those who tuned into previous webinars. So it's really great to hear about what people are interested in hearing about uh, and what would make sense to them and what they want to know about as part of their professional development. Uh, and so thank you so much for joining us, everybody, this morning. And we thank the Department of Canadian Heritage for their support through the Digital Access to Heritage component of the Museum's Assistance Program, which supported the OMA's Small Bites webinar series and our created resources. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Have a great rest of your day and stay cool out there. Uh, have a wonderful summer. We'll see thank you all you, soon. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. Good job. Bye. Bye-bye.